How many people are in this podcast? Three. <laughs> I know the joke you're trying to say. <laughs> Me, you and the boy. <laughs> and the boy. <laughs> Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome to the first Creator Couple podcast. My name is Indes. My name is Perry Cree. And uh, this is going to be a cozy podcast that uh, we decided to start creating for those that enjoy a more chilled, a more relaxed vibe about yeah. the challenge of being in a, in a relationship. But also, this is a very special relationship because not only... <laughs> I'm Portuguese, she's Indian, yeah. so we have here some big cultural difference, difference. but also we are both creators, and mm. that's where the name comes, creator couple, right? Yeah. So that's been like very exciting for me that we can mix like these two worlds, but also we're going to go through some topics that we're going to commentate, like some trending things, some yeah. things that happen during the week that maybe you get, we get excited for. Yeah, I would also like to add some gossips because I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's going to be a, a very interesting podcast, mm -hmm. a more personal behind the scenes kind yeah. of type. Uh, for me, I feel that uh, why we are doing this, it is because there's not a lot of content when it comes to, you know, knowing this behind the scenes for mm. creators, but also mainly both people, yeah. you know, of the relationship, they are inside the content creation. Like it's our case yeah, uh, which comes with a lot of challenge, a lot of good things also. But since we're just starting this journey, it is more challenge yeah. than uh, wins right now, yeah, right? That's true. But also, I I would like to add on this that uh, we as a couple, when we started to go with this content creation and this podcast journey, we were strictly clear that we are not gonna just share about the relationship because there's a lot of content about it, but we deal with a lot of problem as a creator yeah. and as a couple yeah. and like uh, couples working together. So that is such a big challenge and we kind of wanted to bring that also, yeah. mainly that also. Yeah, because uh, I see uh, and there is a few of these couple podcasts, you know, yeah. which so a few of them are, are really Very nice good. that they go into these funny, you know, entertaining things, which we're also probably going to add a bit, but... Uh, I kind of wanted to connect like these two both worlds where yeah. we can share like the struggles of being a creator plus our relationship, which is mainly different for, mm. um, from any. So I, I think like on that side, why we're doing this is to inspire also couples yeah. <laughs> to become creators if they yeah. want to. And uh, some people, they decide to become creators together like we are. And some other people like prefer to go in, you know, solo journeys like mm. we did in the past. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I started alone, you started yeah. alone, and along the way, we kind of matched. Yeah, and the then we decided, journey <laughs> and we decided to do it together. Yeah, uh, and so far for me, it's been very enjoyable. Also, it's still a test, but mm -hmm. uh, so far as a test, I feel like personally, it's been very positive. I hope it keeps being that way. Um, also, like uh, we are going through this phase, yeah. you know, that maybe because like it's still the first months, maybe it is like the romantic phase, but uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> like, you mean honeymoon period of content creation? Yeah. As a couple? I mean, it can happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, I feel like uh, it happens uh, when it comes. And we can speak about like that yeah. honeymoon period uh, a, bit, a bit further down the line on, on the podcast because yeah. actually it's an interesting topic. But I want to speak about the vision for this podcast, mm -hmm. which I feel like it is important that for me, I, I, I see a, a problem in, in the society, like couple content, it, it tends to do less well in general. Yeah. I, I feel I feel that way. Not like relationship content, like that actually yeah. does very well when it comes like to, to being relatable and uh, on like these short clips yeah, yeah. And, and those things. But I feel like doing content that is not about relationships together as mm -hmm. a couple. So for example, we do uh, a Twitch stream and yeah. uh, we do like this commentary and on Twitch, there's not a lot of couples. Oh, that's true. Like I tried a lot of time to go and search couple or a relationship as a topic, but you hardly find people like one, maybe once in a week. Yeah. So that's true. So, so that that's something that that I see as a a problem that yeah. I feel like we could 
help to embrace and inspire more uh, more people to do their things with their mm -hmm. with their partners and uh, that they maybe don't need to be alone on the journey of content creation and they can tag along with their partner and uh, I feel like that's something that uh, if I can inspire like with this yeah. content with our stream with our YouTube but especially like this podcast yeah that'll be such a W for uh, for for us you know yeah what, what about you like do you have like the Aiden miss mission for like the vision for this podcast podcast is one of the thing which will help me to achieve to my vision but uh, yeah I definitely have like a lot of things which I want to do and want to do as a person who is living in this uh, planet earth mm. for me it's more like a creating like a community mm -hmm which can work to uh, not work together in a way but mm -hmm. you know support each other with, yeah support each other and uh, be a part of a change in a way mm -hmm. so i have like a very broad vision in that sense which maybe i think we can create another podcast <laughs> <laughs> you know out of that but uh, definitely you know yeah because before we started the uh, streaming together on Twitch and uh, we already had the, the did some behind the scenes kind of gossip bit for us yeah. that uh, we had this idea about doing the creator couple uh, YouTube channel yeah. where we're going to be a couple but we're also going to share tips for other content creators and all these things but then along the way we realized then them we cannot do really do this because we are not first of all that experienced yeah. when it comes to content creation so Let's first doing it, do start doing it. Probably get su successful at it, yeah. and maybe down the line we can create like a community for other couple of creators, and uh, also maybe a, a YouTube channel that you know we can maybe share some some advices or some s maybe some educational type of content, mm -hmm. which for me it is a, a, a part of a type of content that. I, I very much enjoy because I like to to share my experience uh, with other people yeah. and hopefully, you know, if they can take something out of it. Mm -hmm. But I don't consider myself like an ex expert or anything, go to a point. And this was something that you pointed out like yeah, early like, on. Yeah, that we don't need to have an expert, but what we can do is like, because we are doing as a creator, as a couple and a creator, we can share our experiences, like, you know, a lot of struggles we go through like in the daily life you know and also deal with the relationship you know and these both of these things are completely different lives you know yeah like uh, sometimes uh, we are working as a couple on something and then we start missing that personal time you yeah. know so yeah like these are like very small experiences which are experiencing and the maybe we would like to share these kind of small things you know yeah, so one of the first concepts that uh, I was, when I was trying to design our logo for this uh, creative couple was that I tried to make the logo in a way that uh, they were going into opposite directions. So oh. I, I, I made like both words, creator and couple, going in like one in italic and like the other. Like a magnet? Uh, no, 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 like in reverse. Like mm. uh, imagine like they, they share different di yeah. orientations. Because <laughs> the concept was that I thought was, Okay, these two lives, you know, creator, which mm -hmm. is very demanding, very lonely also, and is a 24-7 kind yeah. of job, you know, like you don't stop. Uh, even for us, we stop yeah. a lot still because yeah. we are, you know, trying to balancing it, uh, this kind of relationship, you know, with it. But we know as we get deeper into it, we're we'll gonna have, have to embrace. To get into it, yeah. yeah we That's got... exactly what you were talking about during our walk. You know, yeah. I think that's also one of the thing with big creators. They see the life as a content. You know, yeah. And uh, that's what you'll have to embrace. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it gets really tough to be a creator. I am sure, like a lot of people, they know how to differentiate. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we'll have to get into that zone. I, I feel like it. it when I, when I said it, I agree with what you're saying, like getting more into it, but still, you know, I want to have a personal life still, yeah. right? I want to get have a healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. I want to have uh, kids in the future, a family. I want to be able to live a life that is 
I create content and I do it because I enjoy it, but also I can enjoy my uh, my relationships in mm-hmm. my family, right? So this is a problem that I see that uh, why sometimes it's very hard for you to see couples creating content or even streamers, which yeah. they stream for many hours, you know, and they, it's like, when you're creating content and especially streaming, because I, I've been streaming for the longest, dedicate so many hours and you were alone for so long that over time, even if you don't want, you're going to start deprecating when it comes to friendships. Hmm. It will be harder to maintain relationships, you know, like uh, that we can speak about like how, how we met a bit now. Yeah. So me and me and Peter Cree, we met in 2019. It was uh, a trip that I did after meeting one guy here in Europe, uh, in Berlin. And uh, after a, a wild night with that guy, he invited me to India and other guys. It was not that wild, but now I was kind of hyping it. But uh, <laughs> we were just drinking and having some fun. And they said, yo, you got to come to India. Like, you, you're probably going to enjoy. Just come meet us. And I was like, what? what? India? Like... You know, it didn't even was like in my crossed, top. Yeah, yeah cross my mind or was in a, like my top 10 countries that I wanted to visit. Mm-hmm. To start, I had like many others first, right? So it was like, okay, maybe this is actually what I need to do something out of my comfort zone. Something that I probably never, if like, if I didn't do that at that moment after I met that group of friends, mm-hmm. I'll probably never probably even went to India, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I can, but I just saw that as a life a, signal. Oh, you thought, okay, it's going to be a soul searching journey. Yeah. I literally thought about like <laughs> Steve Jobs. I, before that, I read his biography. Uh-huh. Um, it is, it is a decent book, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I kind of enjoyed it because also I'm a Steve Jobs fan. I'm an Apple fan. So there is a moment like in the book that, you know, Steve Jobs goes, li- lives for a while in India and he tries to find like his soul, his search, mm-hmm. his imagination and all these things. So after the period where I was thinking about closing my company, I connected the dots and I said, okay, after I close the company, what I'm going to do, right? So maybe I'll just go to India and I'll do some soul search for a few months. And uh, if it happens to Steve Jobs and many others, maybe it will happen to me. Yeah, well, well, you search your soul. I search your mate. soul and I found my soulmate, <laughs> right? Uh, that's true. Uh, I didn't find the purpose that I was yeah. looking for, like when it came like to the work or to get inspired. But I mean, look at it now. It kind of turned out well, right? Uh now we've been together for the, almost four years. Four years, yeah. We were apart after that trip that I did. Yeah, because of COVID. COVID was yeah. such a pain in the ass for us. So what happened is like you came back to Portugal after that trip and the COVID happened and borders, they got closed. So we were away for like 2.5 years yeah. in a long distance relationship without meeting each other. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. It was such a long time. It was. It was a very rough time of our relationship, I think. Yeah. And it will be like forever. forever. <laughs> yeah, very rough. Like extremely rough. Yeah. Maybe one day was... we'll, uh, we're going to go through it and uh, explore here in the podcast. Yeah, long distance relationship. How how it can affect. In, uh, mainly, yeah. you know, we can definitely talk about it in the future. About like some good practice and extremely bad practice because I yeah. think we went all over the place. Yeah, you know? we have both of experiences. It was extreme and good and bad both. Yeah, and definitely we have a lot of things to talk about it. You know. Yeah, we have a lot. Of but uh, you know, after four years now, we're married, and uh, we're now living in Portugal. So big, big shift after staying for one year yeah. in India, right? And, and by the way, today I'm completing one year of living in Portugal. That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. Clap. I think I should have a cake after you, you should, this broadcast. Uh, uh, <laughs> any excuse to have sweets. <laughs> any excuse to have sweets, right? Yeah. Do you think we had to delay all this time and really starting our podcast in your, your first year here in oh, Portugal? Oh, that's so... I personally feel this is a really nice, good day to start our podcast. Yeah. You know what? I want to ask you. I am connecting the dots right now. After one year, how do you feel here in Portugal? How do I feel here? Mm. It was a huge, huge change for me. There are some things I miss from my country, Mm. but uh, there are some things I got here in this country, which I never got in my country. Mm -hmm. In India, I was always worried about my safety. Here, it is so different in terms of women's safety. 
mm-hmm. i don't feel unsafe at all it's like my habitual brain who is always like uh, you know worried about like these things unsafety and all that stuff so my brain is still processing that no you're safe it's a safe country it's mm-hmm. not india you know yeah but you always feel alerted you know i always feel alerted because of i think it's i have this habit of like 30 years or something yeah i mean i'm not a woman i didn't live for that long in india but while i was in india for me it was always like very hard to not be alerted all the time and as soon as i came to portugal i'm not saying like it doesn't happen crimes or anything but it's just, it just like happen anywhere yeah. yeah it happens anywhere in the world yeah. especially you just have to be cautious uh gladly also i have to say never happened anything to us in uh, yeah. in, in india while we were there at least for me i don't have any bad experience however i always took a lot of cautious and i was always yeah. like super alerted uh for for everything and uh, i feel like that was one of the main reasons that i can stay there for a long period of time but you know living there for a long time like i will definitely miss that feeling that uh, i just want to be relaxed sometimes and take yeah. a walk and just be more relaxed you know i i can understand i mean i can't understand but uh, i feel once i go to india after like living here for one year or two mm-hmm. year i think i will see these changes you know it will be more clear for me to see like the peace you get here the safety you get here you know and uh, i think it's going to be really nice experience for me to go back you know so and just to notice these things w- what a- what about like for example your your hardest challenge like here here my hardest challenge is food mm-hmm. uh, food not sweets non with <laughs> no not sweet no i also i'm not saying that the uh, food is bad here mm mm-hmm. you know but uh, i was used to eat like no vegetarian food yeah. for like a rest most of my life and uh, spicy food it's a, it's a, it's a different food altogether and once i moved here <laughs> it was completely opposite you know so that part i think i'm still trying to figure it out like it's a everyday struggle for me apart from that i don't think there is a, a bigger struggle mm. here and uh, there are some people like there is one thing which i noticed here in portugal that uh in india you talk to everyone almost everyone mm-hmm. you make uh, like very quick friends with grocery guys and all that stuff mm. but here things are very structured you know and you don't know who is your neighbor i mean you know but you don't know in details mm-hmm. you know so so even if you build like these very you know superficial relationships you feel like uh like what do we call being part of the community you know like knowing the grocery guy yeah. knowing uh, you know the guy that brings you milk or fruits or whatever yeah. uh your neighbors makes you feel like you belong to that place you know yeah. even if you don't have a very deep connection is something like yeah. something nice you yeah know? yeah it's it is something nice yeah so you know, like you greeting each other is also a really nice thing you know which i like which you started doing recently yeah you know yeah i think i, I learned from th- that from india yeah. who was uh, no be i also be in india and now i'm older you know so i also <laughs> realize you said that you <laughs> been in india and now i'm older yeah that is uh, the conjunction of like two things mm. you know not only i had the experience being there but also i'm older yeah. so i'm less of an asshole <laughs> i hope at least <laughs> um uh, and uh, i just started uh, it's not like being an asshole but just, i just started noticing more things that i can do yeah to also improve you know the lives of others so for example uh not only i say hi to the neighbors now more often i also when i go to runs i say hi to random people because it's just uh, just fun and sometimes you can you can make them smile in the morning but yeah i'm sorry i want i really want to ask this question How do how do you feel uh could you please describe this feeling when you are were running and you say hi and then you in return you get the hi back or good morning back mm-hmm. So it's um, I saw and I got this inspiration uh from uh, Ryan uh what what is the the other name um the, Oh this it's YouTuber Ryan Tram Tram Yeah yeah, yeah yeah something like that is a is a famous YouTuber millions yeah, of subscribers yeah. It's quite fun it's a quite fun yeah, really YouTuber fun. And he has this thing is like howdy. You know, he goes yeah. to people and say howdy, you know, and just goes around and just say howdy. And uh I saw this listen, I saw this like three years ago or something. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's like that thing that kind of clicks, you know, in your mind. There I say, okay, I'm just going to say hi. 
you know, mm-hmm. gonna go, I'm running, I'm walking past someone. There's not a lot of people. And I just say hi. And uh, I would say like 50% of the people kind of ignore you or say a very shy hi. You know, hi. Hi, good morning. You know? Yeah, yeah. But there are a few that are really nice. You can see like they probably look at you and they smile. Mm. So that makes me feel... Uh, Nice that I did something small and nice. Yeah. Like there are the few things you do mm-hmm. and it doesn't impact your life, you know, like drastically or makes yeah. you happy like for also it's not one for me or something. It's not for me. You know, like I'm not doing that to make myself feel better. Yeah. Uh I feel that by looking as comparison in India, where most of the people they say hi, even like if it's like a, in a very superficial way, yeah, it's still better than passing through. You know, your imagine like here in Portugal, I lived in an apartment for many many years. I didn't know anyone in the building. You mm. know, I press to them, you say oh, hi, you know, mm. like but but you don't even say anything else, right? Uh, so it feels like feels like weird. You know, yeah. after going through that experience, uh, and also even though I'm a I'm a streamer, we create content. I'm, tech- I, I became more shy, and I was always shy. I was always a very shy kid. Uh, but during this time that I had like a this design agency, I had to go into a more like business guy. Mm. I had to be more not extrovert, but you kind of develop a persona that you have to be more like a, a people's person. But that was my persona. You know, because my inner self, after I did, I was not on an event or I was out of the calls or, or all of these things, mm-hmm. I was a very still shy. I think like the, the, there is a, this introvert, extrovert, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, personally introvert, but if I have to click, uh, I can be an extrovert, you know, on camera on the stage mm-hmm. i can do it mm-hmm. uh, i i yeah, can literally i like to be on the stage it's such a weird thing but you know you know i rather go on the stage and speak about something for 100 1000 people mm-hmm. than sometimes being in the coffee alone and, and saying hi to someone next to me because i don't have anyone to speak mm-hmm. that thing for me feels i feel so shy to approach people like that it is it is a tough thing if you especially if you are, have a shy personality you know yeah. and it is a biggest struggle it keeps i feel it keeps getting worse and worse when you start growing yeah <laughs> you know i don't know why but yeah uh, it, it is a struggle like remember like after you know we went through covid and uh, I, I then i went back to india to to meet you then we decided to go like to Dharamshala to mm-hmm. live for the for a few months because mm-hmm. it was very very hot in delhi almost impossible to be there and during that time, uh, we used to go like to these these coffee shops, and it, yeah. it was uh, very, you know, with a lot of people. And they were very friendly lo- people. Yeah, they're very, very, very yeah. approachable. Also, yeah. But still, I was so shy. <laughs> I feel like also I'll tell, I'll say this: COVID <laughs> didn't help at all. Yeah, I think COVID. It's not the age; it's COVID. COVID <laughs> didn't 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 help at all. Mm. I think that was something that rapidly decreased my social skills and increased my shy skills yeah. you know um and you i remember you saying to me that oh i thought that you were this other kind of person that will be so comfortable uh, going and approaching people yeah. and just saying hi and say oh no but you're just as shy as me <laughs> and i'm like hell yeah you know like if you want you can go and you're like no no i'm not going <laughs> I'm even worse than you. I'm like more shy, more shy than you. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like uh, you can, you can, you have this con- confidence of speaking as a public speaker. Yeah, you know, I can't even do that. You know, but but you know, like for me, I see that I'm not speaking to one person specific. You know what I'm saying? I'm not speaking to a stranger. Yeah, I'm speaking for an audience. Yeah, which for me. It is easier. You are a performer. Yeah, I I think I just have like that chip that I I turn on the performance yeah. thing and uh, I do. I'm nervous. I before I go to the stage, I'm like almost puking and all these things. But, but once you go, you. But once you... I get to the stage, I just like, okay, let's let's rock, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then I can do it. Mm. You know. So that that for me is um is something that 
I'm happy that I have and I developed, but I was not always like this, you know, like this came with the necessity of, I had to pay the bills. I had to, yeah. to grow the business. I had to, to learn, involve, and I hope for the, you know, maybe some shy couples or shy people that are listening to these understand that you can also learn certain things that will make your life so much better. You pick this path of learning mm -hmm. and I pick this path of escaping, you know. Mm. So I took those kind of jobs where I don't need to go to the uh, to the office every day. You know, I always pick uh, something for my life where I don't get to get the, you know. Yeah, so you kind of ra ran away from the, yeah, the problem. In, yeah, interaction with other people. Yeah. So I'm trying to fix it now. Everyone is still in time, right? Like yeah. for, for me, I feel like maybe because of games, I don't know exactly why, but I, I develop a very problem solving personality. Mm -hmm. I, I think like looking back, maybe it was games, <laughs> you know, like you I played so? a lot of games. Mm -hmm. I had always to come up, for example, I played World of Warcraft, right? And I did a lot of uh, player versus player, right? So a lot of it is you every match on the go, you always have to try to find a new strategy to beat the game. It's, okay, this is a bit more nerdy, okay? But uh, <laughs> you have this side of the game that mm -hmm. you have a boss. The boss has certain mechanics and they will do exactly the same every single time. Once you figure out the tactic, mm -hmm. you can beat it every time just by repeating, okay? The other side, which is player versus player, you're playing against a player, right? So... Every time you play against a different player, he's going to do different things. He's going to mm -hmm. play in a different way. Even though he plays the same class, he's going to be super different. Every match was never the same. So that, I feel like, increased a lot my problem-solving mm -hmm. skills. And uh, as I grew through that, I feel like it just became so natural to me. Every time I had a problem and I wanted to solve something, I will just search or come up with it. I don't know. Yeah. Literally, just I'm now just reflecting on this. Yeah, I think basically you gamify your problems, mm -hmm. and then you find a solution. Yeah, that's the best thing, the best way to solve. I think you know, yeah. because I wanted to win. You know. Yeah. And uh, I also always wanted to win in life. Mm. You know, I always had like delusional goals. Huh? Delusional girlfriends. Confidence. Uh, oh, I, I thought you said delusional <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I, also happening in these days. I mean, I got a delusional wife, friends. boys. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking, of mm. course. Um, but it, it's 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 a nice thing. If my kid goes and plays games, I mean, it could be doing so much worse things, you know? Mm. I feel like games have a, a, a really nice impact. As long as they're moderated and uh, they are... I feel like sometimes people just... Oh, like especially like in in when I was growing, like in the nineties, two thousands, right? It was not cool at all to to, to play, play games. games. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, I literally clap my my mom for never really make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes she got worried, but you know, as long as I had like good, you know, grades, grades. in in school, mm -hmm. she will be fine with it. So in in that sense, I I think. I got like uh, all the support I needed, mm -hmm. you know, made me take charge and responsibility since I was a kid. Uh, also, you know, divorced parents, they also made me grow faster. But I don't know. I feel like it's just a, a sum up of all this experience yeah. that made me when I, I grew older, even though I was shy. Now I had this problem that, okay, I, I need to have a business, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still like shy. And if I keep being shy... I will not have a business and then mm -hmm. I will have to go work for someone else and I don't want to, to keep working for someone else. So, you know. Yeah. It is so fascinating that sometimes life puts you in this situation where you have no choice, you know. But here the mindset plays a big role, you know, mm -hmm. that you decided to solve these situations and problems and the, get the another problem like you gamified everything, you know. And what happens with the other mindset which was clearly mine, that the, instead of finding a solution for that particular problem, I just changed my way, you know? Yeah. And like, it never let me grow. 
in life mm-hmm. till now at least so that sense in that sense mindset is so fascinating you know when i hear you uh, speaking like this i was like that is such a different mindset i never thought about it in in that way you know i always pick the comfort way mm-hmm. but did you surround it like with people that had these mindsets or you always also find and try to chase not chase like you always felt more comfortable with people that shared the, your same mindset okay definitely uh, talking about my friends yeah like f- friends colleagues you know like the groups that you usually tend to to go with okay my groups i don't think uh, it really mattered a lot mm. you know i think it was mostly me who was like uh, making these decisions uh, i never had people around me who were completely like me you know mm-hmm. uh, having this mind fixed mindset and uh, yeah like there are few people they have like uh, but now i think about it like maybe 50% of my friends they have like a similar mindset like me mm-hmm. but 50% i think it never impacted me because i think more impacted me was like my schooling and uh, the city i was uh, i grew up mm. so i i grew up in a very small city in up and uh, there i don't think a lot of people have like this growth mindset mm. because city itself is very stopped you know there is not a lot of growing activities happening it's the same it was sev- uh, the same when i was small and it's the same now when i'm 30 so i think that also mattered a lot for me i think it shaped my mindset in a way mm. you know in the beginning for me it's curious that you you see that for me i never saw the the location as a limiting belief for myself so for example uh I'm not even speaking about that I lived I was born and raised in a medium size small city mm-hmm. but I always saw this that I am from a small country mm-hmm. you know like one of the now a lot of people praise and uh, it is a yeah. great and I also praise the country I love I love Portugal right but uh, in terms of economics and all these things it's a great place to live but like if you want to make money and uh, you know if we have high inspirations is definitely tough tough to to go out of your bubble right mm-hmm. so because of that i always had a very international is like if i'm going to work i never let like portugal or my city dictates my dreams and beliefs mm-hmm. so i always saw is international i saw i'm going to work for the world mm-hmm. i don't work for portugal i work in portugal mm-hmm. but I will work for the world. But that's more like uh, your goal, not mindset. It's a different thing. Mm-hmm. No, it, I, I feel like it's it. more like a limiting belief. Like that if you are born and raised in yeah, in a certain small city, you kind of limit your It is. your 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 beliefs in yourself that I will be able to do this. And also probably mm-hmm. it is also very different mm-hmm. because If you're born in India and born in here, probably th- also the ceiling is different. But yeah. I feel like it's mainly no. a- about like especially nowadays with the internet. I always saw the internet as a escape to okay, it really doesn't matter where I work. Mm-hmm. This was like 20 years ago. Okay, I already thought about like that because I used to also work, not work, sorry. Mm-hmm. I used to also play with people online. Mm-hmm. Since I was like 12. Right, so I I played with people all over the world, especially Europe because of European servers. But as a kid, also gave me this perception that okay, I can be playing at home in Portugal, but I can compete with people from other parts of the world. Mm-hmm. So I never felt like my 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 barriers were the place that I I was raised. You know, mm-hmm. so because of that, it kind of made my mindset. Yeah. expand outside not only my city but also portugal and i see like this more worldwide view yeah i think you just made me think that uh, i don't think it really matters mm-hmm. i think i was wrong but i still but uh, it's a completely different topic you know uh limiting belief i agree mm-hmm. you know that uh, sometimes you think okay it's a small city or uh, you can't do this and that you know mm-hmm. 
but i was like uh, i was more talking about where do i get this mindset of uh, not growing you know where, 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 no the uh, fixed mindset yeah where you got where is the root of your limiting belief right where, what is the root of my fixed mindset mm. you know Mm-hmm. like i was always like you like you were saying that uh, you wanted to go internationally work and all that stuff and mm-hmm. make different friends from different country i always had that you mm-hmm. know and uh, maybe that's why i managed to find someone who is to escape to no, the big city no who is away uh, who is not in india because i was always open to that idea mm-hmm. you know and uh, i moved out of my city when i when i was like <clears throat> on that age to move out you know I think it's different than mindset. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh where my mind my fixed mindset come from that I'm very curious about and I really mm-hmm. want to know. So so I see I see in this way. Okay? I see fixed mindset as the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And there are multiple reasons that you know created the fixed mindset. So yeah. one of them definitely being born in your city is one. Then there are multiple others. I don't think like there is one core yeah, reason. Yeah. I think there are that all these multiple limiting beliefs create the fixed mindset. Yeah. And uh, uh yeah, that's true. And also like uh, living in certain sp- space or city also changes the way you parent your kid. The way their schools are, you know, yeah. the way their teachers mindset they think about society, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, I think in the whole way it affects but uh, also there are some things that you're born with i feel i have no idea how these personalities develop like mm-hmm. extroverted introverted i am never like i think about it and how does that happen you know one is introverted one one is extroverted in the same family same parenting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i think there's some people they're just born with it that's what i don't know maybe i'm wrong or maybe i never got the answer i i feel like but, I I I am not a neuroscientist or anything. Uh my best guess is uh everyone has different experience through life as you were a child and over time that keeps develop like as you experience things it can enable you or disable you. Mm-hmm. So if you have a lot of enabling, you know, that we experience maybe you're going to be more confident, more have more self-esteem which you're going to probably make you be more extrovert more outgoing but maybe if you have yeah. like more disabling every time you're trying something you got no no don't do that no 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 you know mm-hmm. like it's always like disabling your capability of growing you mm-hmm. always feel like you know you become smaller and you become like start not having affecting your your deep inner self and because of that no that i think you're talking about being shy and being confident you know mm. but uh, if you think like i have seen some small kids you know mm-hmm. like we were, we went for a walk and there was this friend of yours with a little girl mm-hmm. she is so shy you know and mm-hmm. she is hardly not even one year one i think one yeah. year old or something well let's see in a few years <laughs> no see. but uh, like if you see some kids mm-hmm. they are just very little and mm-hmm. some of them you see they are extroverted they don't care yeah. and some of them they just try yeah, to yeah it comes like with a personality right introverted like, yeah. yeah so i think uh, being shy and being confident i agree with you mm-hmm. you know that happens with the experiences mm-hmm. you yeah. know but there you're saying there also the a, a part inside your brain that dictates like the personality side right yeah yeah that I part it, i don't know maybe maybe in the yeah. future we can have like a uh, someone do here do more research yeah do more research or maybe call someone yeah Yeah. Maybe. Oh, uh, that I would love to call someone. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we do it that on live stream. Maybe we call Dr. K. Dr. K? Yeah, you know Dr. Dr. K is. I know. He's a he's a I admire him so much because, you know, he was so different from anything before Dr. K. There was not really anyone taking the more professional side of it and create something mm. out of it. Because For the longest time Twitch was all about gaming and it still is majorly gaming right but however there's been this shift to it's like feels like the more you have non gamers yeah. especially during covid joining the the platform to mm-hmm. you are you kind of open the scope of the platform for just chatting 
uh, well, hot tub sections also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and a lot of other countries, including also more podcasts, more talk shows, more uh, live events. Uh, it's just like became so much better, I feel like. And um, for me, even though I love gaming and I enjoyed it to do for like one year, I just feel like it was not fulfilling the purpose mm -hmm. that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Doing this podcast nowadays is like a, a dream come true of like 12 years. That's your childhood dream, right? This one is... It's not childhood, but it's like uh, maybe... You ma were a child when you were... Like I, I was like tw years, 20, 21, 21, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was not... I, I was... I mean, in a sense, you were still a child at 21. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, I was always like so hesitant. Mm. I was super self-confident. I felt like I could have done it, right? And I could have started many years back. However, I, literally my legs just got, you know, cut through my insecurities mm. that was developed, like, from my, you know, my closest friends group. Yeah. And I, I'm not blaming them because mm -hmm. probably they also didn't know what they were doing. Also, I didn't share, uh, which maybe I should have shared that, hey, can you guys please don't do that? Yeah. And say, oh, no, no, that's just for fun. We're just smoking. It's like... But it's like you build a tough skin and you definitely have to be in that group you didn't to develop a tough skin, which I did. Mm -hmm. And I can deal with a lot of things thanks to that group. But other times, like you're in a more vulnerable emotional state, which I still had. Like, and uh, that's also still one of my challenges. It's like that I feel like every few months I go down and up. And uh, I feel like when those moments, those months that, uh, you know, I was a bit more depressed, taking like those those things really, really affected me, right? Mm. So I was like going on these three months where, okay, I'm going to start doing these, et cetera, et cetera. And then maybe like those comments didn't bother me, but after three months and now I'm in a, going down and now those comments are really bothering me, right? Okay, I have a, I, I want to do something. I want you to speak out loud that one comment, which is still bothers you from back uh, back of those days and let that, thing out oh uh one comment in specific like i have to, i have to think on that um i feel like a lot of it was i i wanted to imp also it, because i was receiving these negative comments mm -hmm. i also wanted to impress them mm -hmm. so i felt like yeah. okay if i try to impress to make it seem more than it is sometimes Maybe they people will like me more, yeah. you know, or they will appreciate me more. They will appreciate what I'm doing because I, I was literally just trying to search for validation. Yeah, you know, like it was a very toxic place to be, trying to seek out for other people validation, especially in this case my my, my friends, right? Mm -hmm. So I take like full responsibility out of it. It was I had to come up like with this conclusion, right? I had to let go. That, that that group of friends, I still love them, and uh, I wish I could be in in some ways more connected to them. Mm -hmm. But the the group itself it just didn't work out for me. Yeah, and uh, like there was comments like trying to you know call me liar or mm -hmm. uh, faker or uh, you know he is just trying to be this and uh, look at that. You know, uh, is a wannabe. You know, mm -hmm. is trying to. And every time I I used to post something, I used to get mocked, mm. you know, or and and it felt like really bad because That's I wanted terrible. to. In, uh, above all, I wanted to inspire myself to keep going, and hopefully inspire other people to also that yeah. you can get better, you know. Like I, I was proud of myself, and I just by being proud of myself, I wanted to share maybe. I was sharing maybe probably in the wrong way, mm -hmm. but that's the way I knew back then. No, and that's the way you learn. You don't make a perfect thing uh, in the beginning. You yeah. Know? You start from somewhere. Yeah, definitely. And sadly, this is like one of the biggest thing people are scared of, in especially in content creation. Yeah. I see, I see there's so many capable people who can be like good content creators, mm -hmm. but they just, they're just they just scared of that and these comments. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially for me, it was uh, definitely my my inner friends, mm. uh, close friends that literally, you know, kind of built this very huge insecurity that I could not do that. I couldn't mm. do this type of content. Does I, that still bother you? 
No, 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 not really. Mm. I think I did a lot of personal work over yeah. the, the past three, four years to one of them was just let it go, let it go this this phase of mine and just work on myself but also understand that it was not their fault i i don't blame them for anything because at the end of the day also getting resent leaving the resentment or feeling like this kind of feeling is not yeah. good you know yeah. so i feel like looking back i could have also done better i think w one thing that i literally lacked was communicating my feelings you know Maybe you don't want to do because, uh, oh, we are dudes, you know, we don't do that thing, you know. But you also get this scare that, okay, if I communicate, maybe I'm going to get more mocked, you know. Oh, yeah. Or also more judged, that. you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, because you communicate with people who you whom, with whom you feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. you know. And you feel that, uh, okay, this is not going to be a, you know, backlash from the other yeah. side or they, they're not going to judge me. So maybe that's why you, you couldn't, Share your feelings. Yeah. No, but, but also I then I feel like n meeting you was such a big deal for me because not only I was like in a very dark place when I met you, I was completely disconnected with my feelings. Every feeling that I had, I was like literally shoving it down, yeah. uh, deep down. Like I didn't let any emotion to... I was very... Even though I was like very empathetic when it came to work as a designer and figuring out problems for consumers and business or whatever, I was so, how do you say, apathetic or yeah. uh, too emotional, personal relationship feelings. You were very blocked when I met you. And yeah. I, I, I could sense it, you know? Yeah. That the, you reached until, especially like you have like this broad vision about. Uh, other stuff mm -hmm. but uh, especially when it comes to these came to these uh, personal stuff or emotions yeah you do you didn't allow depth in it you know no but with me like after a point it got like uh, okay you're opening up you know yeah and, and after you open up you kind of let it you, you know like those scenes that you ever something is is closed right but yeah. then the crack starts you know and then starts Happening. leaking and leaking and leaking and then all of a sudden it just Blast. breaks everything and the <laughs> the waterfall comes in yeah. uh, you know so it it literally felt that way it felt that in the past three four years i just made peace with a lot of things i i tried my best to connect w with myself and um because i also was so lost mm. after closing my design company that i lost my purpose I lost my persona. Mm -hmm. I was just myself, you know, me, myself, and I, with my own feelings that I didn't even know what I were feelings. Now I didn't have a purpose. I was like literally waking up every day, and I didn't have anything mm -hmm. except you, you know. And then COVID poof, hit, yeah. you know, and all of a sudden I'm locked in my room. I don't have anything to do. And all I did was pretty much speak with you yeah. most of the time. Oh, I remember those days. And uh, I feel like there was one time you asked me, uh, I don't think I ever told you this, which is curious because now I just remember. There was one conversation we had and you mm -hmm. asked me like, what, what do you really want to do? And I said, I don't know, but I kind of really want to do this. I could kind of wanted to try streaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was like months before actually doing it, you know, because I was still afraid. I still didn't know that I had the courage to do it. But again, you are, you are this thing in my life that even though you're shy and uh, you always see, you know, like your missing piece and all these things inside you, for me, you always give me strength and the, the capability of doing things that I don't feel comfortable or, you know, I'm insecure about. But sometimes you just tell me that, ah, oh, you just, just, let's just do it. Or mm -hmm. uh, you can do it. Like, and I don't know, coming from you, it kind of gives me the enough courage to actually go and do it. Not a lot of people, quite almost, I will say, almost anyone has that power over me. Yeah. 
maybe I can only think about like two people, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you and uh, and probably David. Mm-hmm. So besides those two people, I don't think I r- had enough, you know, it's, it's not respect it, because there's nothing to, I respect everyone. It was just more like, it's like the, the power of like understanding that is giving me the courage to do. Mm-hmm. So for that, you are the reason why I started streaming. You know, you're the reason why I restarted the streaming again. <laughs> yes, you are the and reason why we're starting this podcast. Yeah, I think Adele be so cringe to say, but uh, you made you, me. You do the same thing for me, you know. Mm. And uh, I I remember uh, when I met you on the first date. It was our first date, and uh, I was talking about how I struggle with my design and all that stuff mm-hmm. because professionally I I lack professionalism and all that stuff. And I came back and then you shared these three, four links mm-hmm. with me, which was related to uh, how to fix these things in professional life. And all. I was like, no one ever did that to me after first date, Yeah, you know, and that was so impactful for me, mm. you know, and that's why that's after that, I was like, okay, this is something really nice. I never experienced. And uh, there's one more thing I remember that uh, we were sitting in the social Mumbai and you shared this dream of yours of doing podcast. Mm-hmm. And, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And uh, because you influenced me already in a way that uh, I was like, fuck, you have this capability to do that. And I said, you can do that and you should start it, you know. And then you got silent and you were just thinking and looking at me, you know. There was something in you. And I'm not saying this because I'm your Is wife. Is that the, the, that social that w- I have that clip that I recorded? Yeah. You? yeah. Oh, I see. I, I remember. Now you say this. I, man, I almost forgot that conversation. I remember. You forgot? You, I, I almost forgot that conversation. But now you're saying. Yeah, because back then you, you also really liked to travel before COVID yeah. it was. And, and I the, really like to talk to. Yeah. So I, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I said you should travel and talk mm-hmm. with people. If you like talk with random people and then just put it, you know, yeah. and then I said, you can do it. You yeah. have it. And uh, you were like, okay, <laughs> then you were silent. For yeah, minutes. because th- now, you know, when I get silence, it's like, I know I can do it. I should be doing. But then I see this monster inside of me. Yeah. And that's the monster I always saw all my life. But you know what? I think we're going to let and we're going to say our first dates. And uh, the first date now, we're going to tell the whole story how we actually really met. But for that, we're going to do it on the on the Patreon side. Oh, you know, yeah. We have one more hour of extra content on the Patreon. So, guys, if you guys want to join us to the, the premium bonus episode, yeah. it's going to be patreon.com slash creator couple. Go join us. Are you guys? Oh, I also hope you guys enjoyed this first, first creator couple yeah. uh, podcast we're going to be back next week. So if you guys want, please don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel if you already didn't. And for more, and yeah. if you guys want to support us, just go on Patreon and I'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit. You did the background <laughs> check on me. This is the first time I'm telling these things, like very sneaky thing. Uh, I also don't know, Chad. This is also <laughs> exclusive for me. You look at me like this from the corner. You said hi. I think you said hi. I was like, let's go top or let's go upstairs. Let's go upstairs or something. I was like, okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>